Good morning, family and friends. I greet you in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's talk about enemy energy and enmity entities. Ew. So there's a reason why at certain times it seems like you're under siege. Like when it rains, it pours type of thing and not in a good way. And we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians 2. Starting in verse 13, and this is where Paul was trying to get somewhere, but Satan, by enemies of God, held him back. Now, Satan, through people or himself, can't hold back the plans of God forever, but he can delay them. Verse 13 He's saying to them, and we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at, indeed at work within you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people. The same thing those churches suffered from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displease God and are hostile to everyone in their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. For those on this earth that frustrate, especially continually, the plans of God, via the people of God, God's wrath does come upon them here on this earth. God is patient, not wanting any to perish, and, and even in his wrath, I mean, I, you know, I couldn't say whether or not anyone perishes from God's wrath on earth, but can't be pleasurable, can't be pleasurable. And, you know, that's not, it's the same as it was then, it is today. And it's not just those who are going out to spread the word, but it's just living in the word. You know, back then they called it the way and they were persecuted just for living in the way. And it's still like that today. Excuse me. <clears throat> Where those, you know, scripture tells us all who seek to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Because that's just the state of the world. Cause and effect. Holiness in a fallen world. There's going to be some friction. And so he continues. But brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you for we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan blocked our way. And how did he do that? Again, by these same people that he says they displease God and they're hostile to everyone. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. So you can imagine that that type of energy, you can feel that, you know, you can feel that once the wrath of God is coming upon people um, who don't acknowledge God often, you know, perhaps always they don't have understanding of what's going on. And I'm sure for many, it makes them even more mad, perhaps even more mad at you as if you did it when, you know, people do this to themselves. So let's talk about our response to these things. And we know what the word says, but let's just talk a little bit about why, because we're going to really need to get comfortable here. We're going to need to humble ourselves. We don't want God to humble us. We humble ourselves and we're going to need to humble ourselves and get really comfortable and not be fake about it and also not ignore it because I think a lot of people in the body are just really choosing to like ignore these things as the bigger person. However, you are charged, which means it is your responsibility. You are commanded by the word of God to overcome darkness with light that requires something from you in these situations let's go through some scriptures exodus 23 22 if you listen carefully to what he says and do all that i say i will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you if we're not secure in 
who the Lord is by the word and knowing what he has said that he will do for us, not on a case by case basis, not because we asked him to, but just because he sees all and because you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So naturally, when Satan blocks your way and uses people to do it, you know, Paul and the believers didn't have to beg God to see what was going on, didn't have to beg God to take care of it. No. At the appointed time, and nothing happens before or after the appointed time, but all in God's timing, God's wrath comes upon such activities, upon such persecution, freeing your way, no more blockades in your way. And yes, at the same time, the wrath of God falls upon those who had frustrated your way, frustrated thereby the plans of God. If God's word is going forth and never returning to him void and Satan should try to hold up the work of God using people, may God have mercy on those people. So God's told you, I'll be an enemy to your enemies. I will oppose those who oppose you. He says, I will. That is a word going forth. It is done. It is finished. So you have to know that. You have to remember that, that when you have enemies, and of course we don't, we're not enemy people, you know, but people will deem us deem you their enemy. And it's it can be even hard to believe. You know, like, I, I, do people think even that much of me? And, and it's, they do. The darkness is just like a moth to a flame with the light, even though it gets burned. Just weird obsession energy. So the Lord has told you, and you have to know that. You have to know that, like you know your name. The Lord said, I will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you. Luke 6, 27 through 30. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, don't demand it back. And this has happened to many of you, like the spiritual keep away. If the enemy can't frustrate or hold up your plans, then he's trying to use people to hold back what should be, who should be with you. This is what the enemy does. And it is a time where often you see the wicked prospering in different ways which are not right. But, you know, men, even the sons of disobedience, have free will. And, you know, the Lord, we have relationship with him. We receive correction and redirection from him. But for those that are the sons of disobedience, you know, um, God's not going to interrupt their free will choice to sin. He's going to be patient, patient, patient. And at some point, again, the wrath does fall, even upon people on this earth, prior to the final judgment. Because it's a big deal to come against God's people. Why? Because you are thereby coming against his word that he has put forth. And he's like waiting for it to come back to him. Like, where is my word? Satan's frustrating it and he's using these people to frustrate it. Well, what's going to stop those frustrated plans? What's going to bring my plans to fruition, says the Lord? My wrath will slow down those who are frustrating my plans. Spiritual keep away is over. Proverbs 24, 17, do not gloat when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice. It's This is why we need to not concern ourselves with what is not our business, like the wrath of God, like vengeance. Because in our humanity, naturally, listen, if somebody does something really rotten to me, and I am watching them and I see something rotten to happen to them, naturally, I'm going to be like, well, you see, <laughs> you know, and get into that wrong heart posture. Why is it wrong? It's totally natural that I should say that. Perhaps I could even think, well, it's fair, right? But the Lord didn't call us to be fair. And we're going to get into that. We're not an eye for an eye anymore. We are to overcome darkness with light. We are to love and bless our enemies. And that's truly, that is truly like, do not let your heart rejoice. And this is, this is really obvious here. Do not gloat when your enemy fail, falls, that fails, falls. 
And that's like a fit, like it's like an outward. Don't glow outwardly. And when they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice. Don't be happy inwardly either. Remember, you know, sin can sin begins inside. You know, uh, if you lust in your heart, which as we talked about is like the seed of the mind. If you lust even within, you may as well have lusted without. You may have well has love have lusted outwardly. It's the same with sin. You know, if it's in our heart to do it. That's why the Lord transforms our desire. So it's not in our heart to do these things or to think these things. So we can't walk after the flesh and really wait for people to get theirs. That's not a right heart posture. Let's not, let's not be fake or like the world. So Romans 12, 20 says, on the contrary, if your enemy's hungry, feed them. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. And you know, the meaning of this, because I've heard people say it different ways, the meaning of this is the hot coals on their head is, is because like you're going to, by by loving them anyway, by doing the right thing, by genuinely blessing them, blessing people and praying for them, they are going to think about what they've done to you. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt their heads. Heaping hot coals in there, it's going to hurt their heads. And in doing so, it's going to make them more likely to repent. Will all repent? No. But it's going to make them more likely to. This is the mercy of God, the compassion of God, that he says to his people, you know what? I will protect you. I've got your back. I want you to love your enemies to this extent, to this extent, not up to your own understanding, your boundaries, but to this extent. And this is what's going to happen. He goes a step further so as to tell us why this is why you know he, he's not so arbitrary he's never arbitrary you know so he's saying that as you as your enemy is hungry feed them and as you're doing that they are going to says the lord they are going to experience as you are returning them love for the hate they've given you they're going to experience the knowing of what they've done to you because of the love you want justice you want vengeance it comes by love Kill them with kindness. It's biblical. It's necessary. You are commanded to. And this is why. Because in loving back those who have hated you, they're going to remember what they've done to you. And as they remember that, that opens a door that they may repent, which gives glory to God. Because it's not about us. We're here to do the will of the Father. Be mindful. Love is your greatest tool against the enemy, truly. And the result of that is Romans 12, 21, the next verse. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's a directive. An instruction, that's a command. We can't just keep walking away from these things or pretending they don't exist or we don't care or it doesn't bother us or waiting for people to get theirs. You are instructed, commanded to overcome evil with good. So that's in any situation. Whether you bless them to their face, whether you give or whatever it is, if you can't do it physically, you need to be doing it from a distance, praying earnestly. You need to be overcoming that evil with good. It's our responsibility. It is our great honor to be able to overcome evil with good. And most importantly, it's God's will and it's for his glory that we should. And it's like planting a flag conquered by love, this area. It's a dark world. This is part of being the light. It's not always easy. Remember, you've got to take charge of these narratives. Though you might be more comfortable, again, with walking away or saying nothing, God has told you to overcome that evil with good. That's what you do. This is spiritual war. And love is your greatest weapon. Matthew 5, 38 you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and 39 says, but I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. You know, eye for an eye, it wasn't about tit for tat. It actually spoke to proportion because back in the day, they would like, it'd be a little crime and they would have like a huge punishment, like death for like stealing something. So this law, eye for an eye, meant let the punishment fit the crime. It was a, a, a matter of proportion to make them equal. But the Lord went a step farther and he said, don't even make the punishment fair. 
In fact, let there be no punishment at all, but instead let there be love. You know, <laughs> it's perfect. Jesus truly perfected the law. Love is the perfection of the law. It's perfect. Not easy for us to do, but if you just think about it from God's perspective, it is perfect. It is fitting. It is right. And it is just. It is truly justice. And it, you know, it gives again people an opportunity to repent before he judges them. You know, so often we take judgment into our own hands. When the Lord is saying, no, I've told you to overcome that with goodness, with love. I've told you to do that. And that is the will of God for us. Okay. And, and it, this is perfect. It, it's not perfect as in we want to do it, but it's, it's the perfect answer that he completed it in this way. You know, the law was incomplete and it was formerly, you know, eye for an eye. And that seemed fair, but God is not a fair God. <laughs> He's not in either way. You know, if he wants to favor his people, if he wants to qualify the unqualified, he does it. And that's not fair to a lot of people. And if he wants to give people who have come against us another chance and, and tell you to love those who persecute you, that's not really fair. But it is just and it is perfect and it is all based in love and his discretion, which we fall in line with. Psalms 138 and 7 Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. You have to know that about your God. You have to know that. Once you finally have like serious security resting in the Lord, that you know these things without a doubt, that when people come against you, you're just like, I already know. Like, I know he sees it and I know I don't even have to go there. I don't even have to get into the anger. I don't have to get into the bitterness. I certainly don't have to wait on nobody to get theirs because my father knows. My father keeps names. He takes notes. He's got numbers. He's got a whole to-do list every single day. And you don't forget nothing and nobody, nowhere. Then you will rest. You will rest in this regard. And you're going to need this rest because, listen, this persecution... Sorry, I had something pop up because the persecution is not going to stop. And if we continue to go about it in our own human understanding, we, we're not going to overcome evil with good. We're not going to be thereby doing the will of the Lord. Let's not be disobedient in this regard. It's really important how we see our enemies, how we treat them, and how we regard the word of God. Proverbs 16, 7 says, when the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them, which means that they will probably still be your enemies, but they're not going to be in like an open conflict with you. They're not going to be like coming for you anymore. Never forget what the Lord can do in people's hearts just because you don't see it. You need to believe that. You need to know that your God is sovereign. Never make the enemy so big. Never make what people do behind the scenes so big, okay? There is no magic. There is no power on this earth that can surpass the power, the absolute sovereignty, majesty, ruler of the universe. Come on. Do you know who your father is? Because if you do, you'll rest in knowing that he's always got you. He's always got you. And that doesn't mean rest and do nothing. That means, again, you've got to overcome these darknesses with light. Psalms 37, one through six in closing, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the new day son know this about your father he's telling you directly don't fret and if anyone this is a psalm like if anyone knew about vindication about enemies okay about being at war spiritual or otherwise it was david do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong don't even get in your feelings about it because they'll soon die away whether the attacks or the wrath of God comes down. Either way, that's not going to continue. Do you know what you mean to God? Trust in the Lord and do good. He's saying instead of getting in your feelings and, and doing that, 
rather trust in the Lord and do good, right? Overcome that darkness with good, with light. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. He's telling you, enjoy this life. Be in the joy of the Lord. Dwell in the land. Enjoy safe pasture. You're safe, he's saying. Don't think about that. Don't look at that. Don't focus on that. I've got that. He's saying, don't even fret your pretty self about it. Gentlemen, he's saying, don't even fret your, you know, your handsome self about it. Don't even let, you know, your face crease over it. It's going to come to pass. We know that. This is a line that we're walking now. We know persecution is going to come. This is the mindset. And we know what has come is the thing. You know, again, I know that many of your plans have been frustrated by Satan himself. He has used people to come against you, to frustrate your plans, to play spiritual keep away. The wrath of God comes down. The path is being made clear. So dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture, okay? Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I think that was just from our word yesterday. One of my favorite verses. Because you can't take delight in the Lord and wait on your enemies to get it. So he's saying, rest, 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 enjoy, trust me, enjoy the land, delight in me. And as I'm sending wrath down on those who tormented you, on, you know, on people that were used by Satan to go against my plans, he's like, I'll give you the desires of your heart. We always see this dichotomy in scripture, always, where, you know, he's raising his people and this is happening, or the wicked are prospering and the people are being patient. Either way, we're always seeing this in scripture. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. That's the word of God. Sorry, call. The word of God says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. Stop looking back. Stop looking around at what people are getting. Okay? You've got to deal with your emotions with the Lord, not on waiting people to get theirs. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. I just love those four words. And he will do this, okay? He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn. Your vindication like the noonday sun. You know something about the noonday sun? Everybody sees the noonday sun. It's out there for everyone to see. That's what he says about your vindication. That is the table that he sets before your enemies in mind. It is a decadent table. It is a fancy table. He spares no expense because the Lord shows out because he is able. He is capable. He is that God. So, oh, I thought it was going to keep going. So, that's it. Have that much type of security, knowing who your God is, knowing what he does for you, knowing just like, that's his character. That's his reputation on the line. You think he's just going to like forget to vindicate you? Yet when we keep looking, I'm telling you, you can't say, oh, I'm looking for them to get theirs, but my heart's in the right place. It's immediately not. That's because you're walking after the flesh. Because if you're walking after the spirit, you're following the word of God, which says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land, enjoy safe pasture, take delight in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. He's saying, just sit back and receive. Let me handle that. And you can't delight in the Lord and wait for people to get theirs. You keep it clean, okay? Keep your tail clean. You keep your heart soft. Let the Lord mind after what he minds after. He's been doing this for a long time. He forgets nothing. 